Hello, Facebook family, my people. Okay, so tonight we are talking to Kim if I can get this right. If not, I'm gonna have to start this over again, try and figure it out again. Um, but we are talking to Kim <clears throat> today. Here she is, Kim. Are you here? Bring them on camera. I am Kim. Where are you? I'm looking for you, Kim. There you are. Hey, honey bunny. Uh uh. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Oh, Wonderful. So good to see you. Good to see you. You look beautiful as always. Thank you. So do you, my love. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. I'm gonna do a little bit of an intro so that people know what's going on, although I'm sure everybody been seeing my post for the past week about what the topic is tonight. So Monday night, 8.30, Facebook Live, we are talking uh, to singles. And tonight, we're gonna tell you how to get over a breakup. Jeremy, good to see you. Alan Ooh. Naylor, good to see you. I used to work with Alan. We <laughs> had the funniest group at Dare Foods way back in the day. Um, so Kim has, let me see if I can do this different. All right. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to stand right here. So Kim has had the hellish, hellish kind of breakup that you can possibly had the worst heartbreak. Hey, nice to see you. Lisa Kennedy. Just hey, Lisa. bad. Kim, was it not like just, oh. Horrible, horrible heartbreak. Oh gosh, it was just gut wrenching. Really, really difficult at that time. And uh, just looking back, I'm like, wow, just how far I've come since then. It's been amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. Tell us your story. What happened? Well, I met, so I thought was the love of my life. Um, I met him through a friend of mine who we actually lost connection um, through high school. We had a bit of a break there in our friendship. But when I met her, um, met up with her, I was out for dinner with, with a friend of mine. And she was there with her boyfriend. And um, she, there was a gentleman with her. I didn't know who he was, but I was attracted to him. He was this big, tall auto mechanic. Um, so I learned after we began speaking and um, he just was, he really took my attention. I was very interested in him. So after so long, like talking that evening, um, he eventually asked me out for a date. And so we went out and hit it off real well and um, began dating. And for so long, it just felt like it was the perfect relationship because him and I and, um, and this other couple, we were like together, this group of best friends. And, um, you know, it was a safe place for me at that time um, in the beginning. And things just kind of started going south a little bit. That being, I was confused by the relationship. But when I became more intimate and more close with my um, boyfriend at the time, he had a... So the, the girlfriend, the girlfriend, sorry, I'm trying not to mention names here. It's very difficult, the female but friend. Um, the female friend, <laughs> she was um, like just very active with my boyfriend. So it was something that I thought, okay, like this is kind of, you know, red flag. Like, should I, should I be worrying? Is this okay? And whenever I questioned the relationship that they had, it was always, oh, no, like, I love you. You're the only one. Um, why would I be interested in her? We're just friends. And I believed him at that point. But then it turned out to be um, time where he would kind of leave the dinner table and stuff like that to go and help her. And when she was upset, he would go to her aid and he'd be there consoling her. And to me, that was just a little bit uncomfortable. But again, I'm the one with the problem this is normal is what I told myself at that point. Right. And um, so when, so long story short, things kind of kept going in that direction. I was very jealous of their relationship because it was just something I didn't understand. I was never with a gentleman who had ever been with, like had friends that were females and that were so close. So to me, that was just, you know, I was pretty well, like it was just, how do I explain it? Um, 
you were, yeah, I, just... well, I, I mean, I know what you were doing because I know mm -hmm. that a lot of us do it and I did it myself. Um, it's you, you deceive yourself really. Like you kind of, you talk yourself out of your intuition in a way. Like we know when we're being pushed aside, we know when we're not number one, we know when somebody is acting kind of inappropriately, but it's not so overboard and really am I just overreacting? And, and so we have those feelings but then we go, but I really want to be with this person. I really want to spend the rest of my life with them. And mm -hmm. how can I see this in a different way so that it's not bothering me so that I can, I can hopefully stay with this person for the rest of my life? Because maybe if I bring this up, maybe I really just am crazy and overreacting and not really seeing things for how they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally how I felt. Like I believed that I was overreacting, that their relationship, which other people commented on, other people said, isn't that a little uncomfortable for you? Like the way that they hug each other, the way that they, um, you know, help, are always with each other. Like, isn't that uncomfortable for you? And I said, I didn't really know any different because from the moment we started dating, that's the way it was. It was always the the couple and it was me and, uh, and him. And so just, we had a lot of time together. We did, and we were together, we were a pair. When we were together, I just noticed that there was a lot of different dynamics. So like he would be very more, much more immature um, to with, with her um, goofing around that kind of thing. And it just wasn't uh -huh. him. Like in my eyes, it just wasn't him. And I believed that he was this, he was that. And what are you doing? This is going to be our future together that we're, that, yeah. you know, we were talking about and we had this thing, we would always say white picket fence. That's what was our insider. So whenever we were having a fight, we'd always say white picket fence, because that's what we pictured our life together was that it would be, living out in the country someday, him having his auto shop, me, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing, cooking and cleaning, I guess. <laughs> but that's the way we pictured our life together. And I, I was happy with him. I really was. Um, and then, so that's why what came as a major devastation to me was when he just broke up with me out of the blue. So he came to see me and he said, uh, I'm coming after work. So I got all dolled up thinking that maybe we were going out for supper or something. And he just broke up with me. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, this doesn't make sense. We were in a good place. That weekend we talked and, you know, everything was good. Um, but what had happened, he just said that he just didn't have those feelings for me anymore. And I was just shocked because his words were much different. And that's what I was perceiving. I believed that what he was telling me was the truth, that he loved me, that he wanted to have a future with me and everything. So I, I was like, there's something, it felt like there was something more to the story than that. And um, so it was very difficult for our group relationship because of course, yeah. when um, we broke up, it's like, what happens to the group? It was always the two couples. So right. um, when we- Who gets yeah, so the friends? <laughs> what's that, sorry? <laughs> Who gets custody of the friends? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So when it happened, I was just super devastated. And of course, the first person that I reached out to was my best girlfriend who was a part of that group. And I'm like, what happened? Did you talk to him? Like, why did he do this? I don't understand. And she kept consoling me and telling me, just give us some time. I know he still loves you. Everything's going to be okay. He just needs space. So I waited. And I waited. Two months passed. I waited. And mm -hmm. she was still there. We, we we got together at my apartment. We watched, what was it, the, um, oh, the Gilmore Girls. The Gilmore Girls? When they came out with the new um, season. So we spent like six, seven hours hanging out together. And, um, and then shortly thereafter, I go on my iPad from work. And I hadn't been on the iPad for a long time. Um, so I log in and, the, oh, she sent me a message. So I open up the message. Well, it wasn't a message to me. It was a message that she sent to him, which was quite like so that my ex-best friend at this time sent to my ex-boyfriend. And it was just very graphic. It was very detailed. I knew it was something that I shouldn't probably be viewing. But again, he had logged on to my iPad. I had it saved. I thought it was my account. So that's why I was watching. 
And um, long story short, I was devastated. I knew then and there it validated what happened. Um, and I looked back, of course it was open. I looked back and I saw for months it had happened that they were communicating inappropriately together. And yeah. she was my best friend. He was my boyfriend. I was right all along. And yeah. that's kind of how the story went. So that's where the major dagger went in, the heartbreak. And it was very hard at that point. So yeah, yeah. kind of my story in a nutshell so, at that point. <laughs> so you, you, you go through the breakup, you know, you're told to give him some space. Let me clarify this by the person who's actually spending time with him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So she, so it's, it's like she double spending... daggers going on here because you're being deceived by two people. Um, yeah. You're being kept in the dark and you're still holding on only to find out that the people that you trusted the most were the ones that were playing around behind your back. Mm -hmm. So it was, it and was they were like, the yeah, they were my friends, like in the sad, yeah. and I do admit it, it was hard because I was so close with them that there were many friends in my life that I kind of put the brakes on hanging out with them because they were so available. So when it was like, oh, let's go to the car races, we'd go with them. Uh, let's go to the movies, the drive-in, we'd go with them. So it's just while I was with him, they were really our only two close friends. Right. So when this happened, I just... I had no friends. I was totally on my own. And that was a feeling I hadn't had. I don't think I ever felt that feeling of being alone and nowhere to go. Right. Yeah. So tell me what happened to you emotionally after this, this last devastation, after finding out that while you were giving him space, they were, they were playing house. I was, I felt betrayed. I, um, I trusted her. I would go to her. I'd tell her how I was feeling, how broken I was inside, how much I loved him. And I wanted to just be back with him. Like that was our future together. So mm -hmm. I was, when I found out that they were together and they'd been together for a long time, I was angry. Um, and I'm not an angry person for many of you who know me, you know, I'm probably one of the most bubbly people that you'll meet, <laughs> but like, at that point, my whole character was just gone. It was taken from me at that point. So I didn't know where to turn. And uh, I'm going to say that was probably a good month and a half, two months before I met you, Chantal, is um, where I just oh, felt man. lost. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you felt alone. You felt mm -hmm. sad. You felt grief, depression. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All yeah. of the above. Yeah. Stress, I anxiety, stress, anxiety, and anxiety, insomnia. Um, you name it. Like I just felt like there was no way I could go on feeling the way yeah. I was feeling at that point because yeah, I just, even thinking, looking back there, it was a very, very dark, sad time for me because it also, like, I was so connected with his family. I loved his family. I mean, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I pictured myself being a part of that family. I felt like I already was. So it just when the ties were cut that way, it was very hard on me. Um, and I, I do still have, um, like, have some friends through that relationship yet um, that, you know, like, related, like I see his family around and it's, it's civil. It's not anything negative, um, <laughs> but it, it is difficult. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing and at I the know story that. at the, um, uh, in the chicken restaurant. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me just kind of say it for you. There's been a few run-ins and yes, there's been a couple run-ins. <laughs> so, and you know, I remember when you and I started talking, um, some of the difficulty that you were having was over these run-ins because the town that you're in is fairly small. You're running into people that he knows at work, you know, when you're out grabbing food, like it was just so in your face. And, mm -hmm. and you went from having a lot of anxiety during these interactions to, you know, being the one that was like, while they're still kind of <laughs> feeling nervous about like oh my god it's Kim 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no anxiety anymore. Like I've, and I have, I've drove past and like in the beginning I would reroute on my, like heading um, anywhere. He lived kind of heading out of town. I would take the furthest road. If I was heading to Kitchener, I'd take a different route. I would not pass his work. And now I'm like, who am I hiding from? I didn't do anything wrong here. So yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So no, I, I drive past. I, I've seen him in public, you know, and mm. it happens, <laughs> but it doesn't, doesn't bother me yeah. anymore because I've dealt with it. So tell us how you went from now, again, just to kind of put an emphasis on how you were feeling after this. Um, I, I remember we talked at some point about you losing your hair. Was it, was it around that time or was it before that? Oh, uh, that was kind of something I was going through for a while. I think it got worse, like the stress and that kind of thing got worse. But yeah, like I, I'd lost uh, more like I more lost sleep <laughs> than, than hair at that point. The hair thing was a lot, little bit earlier, unfortunately. It's growing okay. back now. <laughs> oh, so exciting. Yay. By the way, I've got, I've got Kim doing what I do, which is like Indian herbs for like coloring, uh, like, you know, hen like I do henna and indigo because you put the indigo on the henna and it turns dark. She's doing pure henna and, uh, and washing with like, uh, like amla powder, which is like an Indian berry, like so awesome. Anyway, that's, that's something completely different. So <laughs> you were down in the dumps. Mm-hmm devastated, um, you know, not sleeping well, feeling stressed, anxious. How did you come out of that? What was your journey from there? To, like grieving this relationship, angry to where you are today, which seems really happy. Mm -hmm. I think the first month or two, I was just, I wouldn't go out. I went to work, came home. That was it. Didn't really get out, have fun, socialize. And I am a very social person. Um, so I think in the beginning it wasn't until, and, and well, actually what happened was I would also have, I'd kind of start butting heads. I'd butt heads with my mom. I'd butt heads with my friends because I had so much anger and frustration and I didn't know who to direct it at, nor did I know how to release it at that time. So my relationships weren't great. Um, and I remember my mom calling me and she said, and this was actually after we hadn't been talking, I'm going to say for a week or two. So I was shocked to get this call, but it was the thing that changed everything for me and this call was that she and my aunt had visited the uh, total women's show which mm -hmm. I hadn't heard anything about before and I'm very happy that I did go um, because it was a day where it was really the, the first day that really sent me walking in the with a couple steps in the right direction and I'm gonna say instead of a couple steps more like a couple jumps <laughs> because right. um, I had gone and I'd spent the day by myself and just kind of visiting these booths that was all geared towards women it was um there was all kinds of different like uh oh what was it like just health and wellness and just stuff to make you feel great and special and pretty and it was probably just before lunch when I decided to walk over um towards a booth that said Canada's dating coach Chantel Hyde well that was the first time I ever heard of her who is she <laughs> that was the first time I heard of her and I was just drawn to the booth and drawn to the books and no more assholes oh my that God. one totally <laughs> spoke up to me <laughs> So my mom actually, so I backing up a couple steps, my mom told me about the total women show and how she had met you and she told you a bit of my story and you recommended this book as well as the comeback queen. And um, so she picked up some books and I picked up some books the next day. So uh, when I came to your, your booth, she had all like, I, I think you were already on stage. And so um, the lady that was working in your booth, said go listen to her so I went over and I sat and uh, I th at first I felt uncomfortable because I'm like okay I'm here alone you know I was picking on myself because I hadn't learned what you taught me yet um but I was pick I was beating myself up like oh gosh I'm here all by myself um but your your talk was very engaging and yes Lisa you need this book it's amazing uh, oh, <laughs> that's awesome so, um, <laughs> oh my God, I yes I'll get you coffee oh, sorry. Katie 
I'm yeah. so proud of you, Kim. You have gone through so much. Keep yeah. shining, love. Oh, yeah. Love you, yes. Katie. Hey, Chantel Dennis. Yes, I need that book. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Katie, yeah. um, I saw her in that crowd, and it was like, you know when you when you see somebody from across a room and there's nobody else in that room because they just there's something about them and it just shines so bright. I saw Aww. Kim and I was like, oh my god, this girl is amazing because she really stood out in the crowd. She was she was full on there, like full on there, full on enjoying it, and and like feeling the vibe. And you know, Kim says that she's come so far. But the person you're seeing today is the person that I saw from the moment I laid eyes on her. I uh -huh. saw straight into her soul and I saw this person that you're seeing today and she hasn't changed in like for me, she hasn't changed from that person. She's in, in my experience, like my experience, it's, she's just had moments where I, you know, I call them kitty in the tree moments where you know, the cat gets stuck up in the tree and you got to get the ladder and you got to help the cat back down. Like, I'm the fireman kind of, oh my God, I can't. Oh my God, he's like, he's a So, like, she's always been, and, and it was just, it was just under those layers that she was feeling. But anyways, go on, Kim. Yeah, oh gosh, where was I? That just, wow, so, you didn't tell yeah, me any issues. You came um. to the <laughs> show, you came to my booth, and Stephanie mm -hmm. said, go, she's on stage right now. You get in the crowd. You're having a good time. Yeah, I just, I really let loose and had fun. And that was the first time that I had fun since this happened. And I was dancing. I was like smiling and laughing and crying and just releasing tension. Yeah, uptown yes. funk, you name yeah. it. <laughs> I yeah. had so much fun. And I just felt like this like you opened the door for me and welcomed me in and yeah. my life, like the past is history. And I f truly feel like I just, I felt so much like welcome and comfort and you just took my hand and brought me towards in a direction where I never thought I could find and on my own. And it wasn't until I sat down and I read, I think I read the comeback queen first, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. I learned so much about like purging the relationship. And you mentioned that in No More Assholes also about purging your relationship, purging yeah. your ex, getting rid of things that remind you of him. And that in itself was very therapeutic for me. That was a huge step. It did take a bit to accomplish that, but I felt amazing after that happened. So that's kind of where I started was when I met you, when yeah. we started to build a relationship based on your books and your, like your, how you, I felt like you kind of helped me. You took my hand and led me through so many um, different situations and just gave me a different perspective. And um, so the books were amazing. I, I made a little couple little notes here. Um, <laughs> I learned about like self love and loving kindness and how to meditate. That was one thing I wasn't familiar with, but it's something that is amazing and it's helped me. And Katie, you can tell them that I tell everybody meditate, meditate, meditate. Um, <laughs> it's something that has really helped me and it's helping my friends too. Like some of my friends, they've got on board and they've uh, started meditating and just listening to your, like your channel, your meditate with me channel on YouTube. <laughs> Katie says she let's, does. Yep. Yep. <laughs> let's meditate. Yeah. It's called, it's called let's meditate. My YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube, type in Chantal Hyde, you're going to find my channel. Click on the let's meditate playlist. Okay. I've got tons of tracks in there. I actually have a friend, Rich Pendlebury, who I got to bring him on one day. Cause this story is so incredible. This was my very first boyfriend when I was 10 years old. I spent two Aww. summers with my cousins. He was my first kiss. And I went home. I wrote him a letter. I didn't hear anything from him. And that was it until here I am, 45, and we run into each other again. And now he's making music for us to meditate to. And it is the most phenomenal meditation music I have ever listened to. It is incredible. Wow. You're loving it, Kim. I am. It's awesome. Yeah. And so like the meditation has been a huge help also like just releasing and releasing anger, releasing frustration and just talking to myself better. So like better self-talk. And one thing that really resonates with me is just talking to yourself and your best friend voice. And yeah. for so long, like 
I always told myself, you know, you're not, you're not worthy. You're ugly. You're this and you're that. And I'm like, would you tell your best friend that? Would you tell them that you're, you're all this terrible things? No. So I started changing my self-talk, my mirror work. I wake up in the morning and say, you're going to have an awesome day and um, look how far you've come. And um, just, I started saying yes, finally, people would ask me out and I'd find every reason in the world not to go out. And now like <laughs> edit, <laughs> just some, to some degree, I've say yes to so many different things and just trying new things and experimenting and like, just even like going out of my comfort zone, like an awesome band that I love. They welcomed me up on the stage to sing a song. And at first I'm like, no, 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 no. I got up there. I didn't even think about it. And I had so much fun. So stuff like that. Um, and also another thing is um, finding out who am I. And at the beginning, yeah. it's like, okay, who am I? I am a, I'm a good cook. I'm a good activity coordinator. Like, this is difficult. Well, <laughs> 145. Yes. Do you remember this, Chantel? Yes. Well, yeah. Okay, so, you know, ladies, um, everybody, like, if if you're – if you're not feeling good enough, it's because you're not seeing yourself well enough. You're not giving yourself enough recognition. And Aww. Lisa Kennedy, yes, you are. And <laughs> and so one thing that I have people do is write 55 O I am statements that are all positive. And, and you know, that push, that, mm, that really thinking, digging deep to get to 50 is what is going to rewire your brain to recognize yourself fully because when you elevate yourself nobody can take advantage of you nobody can bring you down because you're in control and it is incredible oh maggie's here that's so hi maggie, awesome. <laughs> hey, maggie. Let, me, let me see if i can make her a little bed hold on a sec maggie come here baby come here come see what you can do here okay maggie on your bed <laughs> she just wants to hang out. I'm just making sure she's going to be chill. Hi. There we go. Aww. So, uh, where is she? Oh, there you can see her. That's, that's Maggie. <laughs> she's my, my rescue poodle. She's my guard dog. Jennifer, this is awesome. Find yourself, girl. Be your awesome self. Someone's going Greek. <laughs> Someone is going <laughs> Greek. What? I love you because oh. you are actually fabulous. I'm sure she's talking to you, Kimberly. This, this oh, is, this thank is, like, you, Jennifer. <laughs> um, like Kimberly is this incredible, beautiful soul, and I love spending time with her because she is so emotionally rewarding. Like, you know, she, we all hit ups and downs, and she had a lot of downs when she was coming out of this because. It's it, like getting yourself through something like this. It's kind of like looking at the Dow Jones graph, right? Like you, you go up and then it goes down and goes up and it goes down and goes up. But as long as you keep doing the work and I could always tell when you were not meditating because, oh, yeah. you know, I, I might, I might check in because I might feel that you were down or you might. Yeah. Katie, you know, <laughs> but like, we would get in contact when you were having one of those down times and as the mm -hmm. words were like spilling out on my screen, I'm thinking she's not meditating because she's in a really bad place right now. And she, she stopped shrinking her amygdala and now she's in fight or flight mode. And that's why she's freaking out right now. Kitty's up in the tree. <laughs> Gotta get the kitty down. <laughs> Jennifer Parsons. Oh, someone's gonna love you because you are freaking awesome, right? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> so sweet. So you're, yeah. I am, you're like over 140 now. 145. Yeah. And I just I sat down with it and I like, that's not the only thing I did. I also did, I started with that cause that was a huge, and I think everybody should do this. Like folks do this, get a paper, write down who am I? And not just the, I'm a good cook. I'm a good cleaner. What is it? Like, I can read a couple. Like, I, I am nice. I'm caring. I'm compassionate. I'm thoughtful, energized. I'm loyal. I'm strong and I'm loving. Like, that's just a couple examples of um, the list. And <laughs> there's quite a few on there. 
because we do have to give ourselves a little pat on the back. That's for sure. Yes. And yes, so, right. Hundred percent, hundred percent. If you cannot acknowledge yourself, if you can't pat your own back, then you will be one of those people that every time somebody compliments you, you're going to reject it. So, mm -hmm. really, this this I am exercise. It's it's about elevating yourself so that when somebody comes along and and wants you to be in an elevated position, which is a man, a man is a generous long term thinker who wants a woman that he can lift up and appreciate versus a guy who's a selfish short-term thinker who wants a woman that he can kind of more control so that he can get his way when he wants it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when, when that man comes along and he's like, you are amazing, you're beautiful, you're so kind, you're so generous, you're so wonderful, you're going to be like, thank you. Thank you for seeing that inside of me. Like, like I do, I look in the mirror and I see that and I appreciate having another human being in front of me that sees the depths of my soul as well as I do. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, another thing I did was I, I made a list of why does a good man want to be with me? And I wrote about um, like what is important to me. Um, why, would, why would they want to be with me? And then again, that's talking yourself up instead of down. <laughs> and um, and just focusing on your, your positive traits that are appealing that you know are and that you've worked towards. And that, so that's definitely something that I found for myself because ask me to do this like yeah. two years ago, I'm going to say, cause this year has been amazing. I'm not going to say this year, <laughs> two years ago. And, um, and what I would have said would be, would have been completely different. So, yeah. so yeah. And, uh, the last one I did was also, cause it's also as important was, um, what I want in a man. And mm. maybe do you want to touch on that Chantel? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. You... Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Awesome. So um, that's kind of like the main gist of it. And also just like laughter and dancing and just living life to the fullest and having fun and just making new friends, making connections, trying new things and yeah, just living life <laughs> to the yeah. fullest. So um, that's what I've done. Let's, let's give some advice to women right now. And, mm -hmm. and we've given them some tips for pulling themselves up when, mm -hmm. you know, like that down Dow Jones chart, you know, you're going to go mm -hmm. up and then you're going to hit a down. What do you do to pull yourself? Like, like you've been doing some work and you're thinking, wow, this is great. And then you kind of, you hit another low. What was your remedy for getting yourself out of that low sooner rather than later? I think the main key, and I'm going to preach this a couple times, I'm sure, is, of course, for me, was meditation. And it was just because I'd find that when you meditate, you you take that focus off of that fight or flight response and you put it on um, loving, kindness, respect, and uh, just building yourself back up again. And that's where, like, I would just be like, okay, I'm feeling angry right now. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to meditate. And at first, like it would be difficult to take my mind from that stressful experience and put it towards uh, focusing on me and bringing myself inwards. And when I finally figured out how to do that, that's what really helped me. So the meditation part, um, and you know, like, as, as you say, like we, sometimes we cycle, we go backwards a bit, but I find when I cycle, sometimes I don't go back near as far as I used to. So when we fall, it's not near as bad. And it's something that I can maintain because I started to build a framework, um, like a foundation that doesn't have any cracks anymore and it's feeling stronger. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, I'd say probably right. meditation and, um, and again, like talking myself through it. Like I just live with myself and the cat right now. She may think I'm crazy. I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but... You're not a crazy cat lady. It's all good. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I, so, you know, like I, I observe your life and mm -hmm. I love how you just embody this single and fabulous lifestyle. Like Single is definitely not a disease with you. Mm -hmm. I never thought it could be this good before I met you. Like I just, and you've shown me like, go for walks, meditate, um, find what you love, find your passion. And like, that's truly, truly helped me. And I'm just doing so much for myself. I don't even think when I'm out somewhere doing something by myself, I think it's more 
it's difficult for other people to see me by myself, but I have no issue with that. For example, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, today was my day off and I decided I'd take myself out for lunch. And so I just went out um, to a local cafe and the waiter came over and he gave me, um, he gave me the menu and like, so I picked what I wanted and he said, do you want to keep it? So you have something to read. <laughs> he thought I was going to be lonely. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, I, I'm quite okay with my own thoughts. Thank you though. <laughs> and I think that other people are so like possibly uncomfortable um, seeing you alone, but I'm just, I love going out. I go out to the movies by myself. I go, I even took myself bowling. I'm, what? I always win. That's a good thing. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I know I've truly, I've just embraced it and I'm happy. And, you know, I, I just feel powerful and strong and confident and, you know, like I don't, people are like, oh yeah, like you're preaching all of these books, but you don't have a man yet. And I'm like, he's coming. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'll be ready for him when he comes. Right. Yeah. And it's a big process. It's a big step to be where I am. It's just after what happened, I was so low that I needed this time to build myself back up again. And I have. So. I am yeah. so proud of you. Like, like, oh, I, can you feel it right now? Like, I am just feeling oh, yeah. so much love and pride for you. Like, you have absolutely come far from the person you told me you were, not the person I first saw. But you've mm -hmm. come far from the kitty in the tree. You've, you've come far, you know, from, like, your, your power, your confidence has grown so much. And I am super, super, super proud of you. And oh, I can't you. wait to see what's next in the story of Kimberly. <laughs> I'm excited too. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask Thank you this. You. What's mm. your favorite book? Oh, gosh. Mm, I, I love all of them. I, I, it's hard yeah. to pick just one because like for different <laughs> phases of my life, right? Like yeah, I, 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 for example, I just... I've reread this No More Assholes like today yeah. again. Um, I finished it like I probably have read it like six or seven times now. And I, I just, I, lo I love the content. Oh goodness. I think right now probably say yes to goodness is something that's really resonating with me. Nice. Say yes to goodness. But yeah, but I, I do keep going back to No More Assholes. So I like love how the you title. said, every, um, <clears throat> you said one time that every time you read it, you're like, Oh, I used to be there, but I'm not anymore. So it kind of shows you how you've made progress too, in a way. Yeah. Like I haven't, one book that I haven't picked up for a while because I don't feel I need it anymore. Like I did at the time was the comeback queen and yeah. I needed it at that point. But now I'm like, that was me. I love, I love the book. It's a great book, but I, that's not where I'm at right now. So yeah. I keep refreshing myself with no more assholes. Um, yeah. But I also feel like, yeah, so yes to goodness is the one that's really helped me too. Fake love, fake love need not apply. That's been helpful mm -hmm. also. Um, yeah. I can't pick my favorite. This is difficult. We'll say my favorite of the that's day okay. is no more assholes because I, I had nice. a great time with it today on the patio. <laughs> You're so cute. You're so adorable. All right. Well, okay, Kim. Thank you. Like. Thank you. I think, I think we taught a lot today. I think there's going to be a lot of women that are going to learn from what you've gone through and how much you've elevated yourself and how good you feel. Thank you. I love you. I feel great. I love you. Yeah. You're a good woman. Aw. Thanks, Chantal. Thank you for everything. It's been amazing. And you know, if anybody can learn something today, I just say, go to Amazon, pick up these books. Or if you're in Stratford, talk to me and I will get you some. I, <laughs> no, I'm not getting paid. I'm just saying this is so helpful. And I just, I, it's amazing. It's really helped me. And I just, I would not be where I am today without Chantal. And I really hope that there's somebody listening today that will reach out to us because, uh, yeah, like, like she's amazing and she can certainly help you. You're never alone. Never alone. True. I'm always here for my women. If, if there's one thing that I love, it's love. And it's, I fully believe in butterfly effects. I, I really feel like we infect each other and 
you know, I've infected you with what's inside of me. You're infecting people around you and it's going to go on and on and on. And girlfriend, we are starting a revolution. <laughs> we definitely are. Yeah. I can feel it. Lisa Kennedy <laughs> says, Lisa says, thank you for sharing, Kim. Aw, yeah. thanks, thank Lisa. So Lisa's an okay, amazing so activity manager. <laughs> oh, is that? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you all can find myself on my website, canadasdatingcoach.com, lovemaker.love. I've got a ton of info attached to this. Share this video, guys. Like, you know, let's lift each other up. Let's get some power going. Let's get some happy women creating happy men, having happy families with happy kids. We're going to have their own happy relationships. And we're going to make a huge snowball effect of amazing love. I love you guys so much. We're going to sign off now. Thank you, Kim. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>